Today we're going to be changing the fuel pressure regulator in a C4 Corvette. Hello, I'm Donna Murray and you're watching the Corvette channel. Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today we're going to be changing the fuel pressure regulator in my 1988 Chevrolet Corvette. Now this video should apply to everything from 1985 up to 1990 with the L98 motor. So sit back and relax and I'm going to try to show you how it's done. Hopefully I'm going to be trying to get you two different views here. We've got one, <clears throat> one coming off of the main camera right here and then I've got one on my head here so you can see first, uh, first person view here. So hopefully the camera stays focused on this and then we can get you uh, the, the best that we're, uh, we're going to have here as far as views are concerned. Now, <clears throat> the reason that we're going to be changing the, the uh, pressure regulator is because the car, and this is very inherent, the car has about 82, 83,000 miles on it now, and the fuel regulators, they go bad. And <clears throat> what they do is they end up, um, the fuel ends up getting up inside here. And this, you can see here, right there is the fuel regulator, okay? The fuel pressure regulator. Now, it's all controlled by vacuum and a big spring that's down inside. And basically what happens is that the diaphragm inside starts to leak fuel starts getting up inside here and it basically floods the engine. So in order to be able to start this car almost all the time right now is you have to put your foot to the floor. You shouldn't have to do that with a fuel injection car. So um, that's basically why we're changing it. And so we're going to go step by step and how we go ahead and pull this whole thing off. Now what we've got to do is we, and you can kind of see a few of the screws here, but you can't get to all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking these vacuum lines off, be taking these bolts here and on the other side, as well as the, uh, uh, the linkage for the throttle. And uh, we've got to take, we've got to take the, the tube off here uh, for our snorkel and get our mass airflow sensor off and out of the way. And then basically what's going to happen, and we also have to take this off, we're going to be able to lift this, once we get these bolts all free and get all of our parts free, we'll be able to lift this up and out of the way enough to be able to get down in there. I, I don't understand that one. They did this, uh, I did this on my, 90, on my 92 also, which was an LT1 motor, and it's a different, a um, little bit different spot, um, regulator but it's the exact same way. You've got to pull it all apart. Um, at least this one, I don't have to pull the, the fuel runners out. All of my fuel injectors are actually going to be able to stay right there. Um, and the old one, I had to do that, or on the 92, I had to do that. On this one, I won't. I just have to get this plenum up and out of the way. Now, again, I haven't really done a lot to this. I had to put a new air conditioning uh, uh, system on it. The pump had gone bad. Um, and other than that, that's about all I've had to do underneath here. Um, so I haven't really started to detail this engine or anything like that, but I'm going to. Now I had made a decision of how I was going to do this. I'm like, I want to get this car ready to be able to, to show in the car shows. And so right now, if you were planning on it, I've seen pictures of it, and it looks very nice that they take this plenum loose and they paint it. And then they put it all back together. I was thinking about doing that, but I said, eh, no, I want it to be original. So that's why I'm just going to pull it apart, put it back together. Um, but uh, if this was what you were going to do, this would be the perfect time to take this apart and paint it and put it back together. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take, um, start taking things apart. So uh, I've got all of my tools out here and I'll try to give you the sizes of everything as we go here. Uh, this is a 5 16 uh, nut here that I'm going to take loose to get the snorkel loose. Okay, and we're also going to go ahead and we're going to snap these little snaps free. You want to be very careful with your mass airflow sensor. These things are not cheap, so you want to make sure that you get that up and out of the way. Take this loose, and then you're just simply going to take this clip loose here. 
Now I've got to be very careful with it uh, because these are brittle. So let me see if I can kind of get there without breaking the clip off. They'll stay in if you did if you did break it, it, it will stay in there. I don't, I don't like breaking clips though. So let me see if I can get see if I can get a little bit of leverage on here to get it off. There we go. Okay, then I'm just gonna set this out of the way. Just like that. Alright, and then we've got another sensor here we've got to take loose. This is our throttle position sensor right here if anybody is wondering about that. Sometimes those if you start having idling issues um, or the I've also in my 86 I had had this where I was driving down the road going down the freeway and I would let off because I saw traffic or whatever I just let off the throttle and the engine would just cut off. I mean just shut off. Um, and I took it to two different Chevrolet dealerships in the area and they could not find it. Uh, a, a, what ended up being a really good friend of mine, uh, he had a small little shop, walked over to him, he, I always saw Corvettes in the shop, he, and uh, went, walked over there and told him, hey, you know, this is what it's doing. And uh, he said, oh yeah, it's idle control, uh, idle control solenoid, so just go ahead and uh, replace that. <laughs> I did, bam, it was, it was fine. So anyway, that's, if you're ever experiencing that problem, that's what that's all about. Okay, so now what we've also got to do here, and I'm going to move over to the other side here, because so, I've got all my tools on the other side. So, um, all right, so we're over here, and I've got, got most of my tools all laid out here. Um, this is a 15 Torx right here. It's going to take these, these little guys off. guy off of here. And again, I'm just going to set this on my toolbox so I don't I don't lose it and I don't lose my screws here. And we've got our gasket kit right here and our new regulator. Now, I bought both of these uh, from AutoZone was about $110. Okay, so this is like 80 some odd dollars in the, the, the gasket kits like 20. So now the next thing we need to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull our cable bracket, our throttle position bracket off here. This is our for our, our uh, throttle. Now what you want to be able to do is you can use a, I'm going to use a ratcheting wrench here to break these free just to get them kind of out of the, out and broke open here. But you want to make sure that you don't let this thing come out too far because what will happen is you'll get your wrench caught see like right down there you'll get that caught and then you won't be able to get this wrench out so you just want to make sure that you don't overdo it okay and down here not a problem there's plenty of room so you can pull this one out but there's no room to really get in there on a straight shot with a uh, with a socket So, and I can get it free now from there. Okay, so that's one. And we should be able to get this one free. Okay, just like that. And then there is a 10 millimeter uh, socket also, or another or bolt that you can get to with a, with a socket and it's right here. I can get my, my socket on there. All right. 
So now we've got that free. Now this little guy just slides off. It's just on a little, little pin, so it just slides up. It's like that. Now this is free and pretty much out of the way. You'll still be able to get your, your uh, 40, mil, uh, 40 torques in here. So we're gonna do that. And we'll go ahead and put that here like so. So hopefully you guys can see that. And we'll pull that one out. Then we're gonna go and we've got another one back here. So then we're gonna we're gonna use a long socket here to be able to get onto this one. Okay. And then we also have one more 40 down here in the bottom. Which I forgot to do until. I was so focused on this top one. Okay. Just like that. So you can see all four of those, all actually all four of them are exact same length. It's just three or three or Torx head and the other one's a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, so now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go to the other side, but you can see here this is completely free. Now the other thing that we're also going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the th the throttle body intake here, and those are ten. There's four 10 millimeter bolts here, and I might as well do that uh, while I'm over here before I move over to the other side. This is going to allow for the um, allow the plenum to actually lift up and get out of my way here. Wow, that was really loose. Yeah, guys, I didn't pre-loosen pre that at all. That was really loose. We moved over to the other side, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our other bolts out of the plenum. Now, I know that you, um, everyone always tells you you need to release the fuel pressure that's um, coming from the fuel pump. And... You can do that. You could go back to the fuel uh, fuel pump and release it back there. You could take you take the gas door loose and and unplug the fuel pump and then try to start the car. Um, or you could go ahead and um, you could pull the fuse. Now, the fuse pump or the I should say the fuse for the fuel pump on this car is located be behind the driver information center uh, up in up in the dash, which is a major pain in the butt to get to. So I've just decided that I'm gonna end up having some rags here and I'm just gonna let the pressure come out. It's gonna spray a little bit, probably get a little bit on, or over here, but I'm not gonna tear my car apart just for that. Um, the car was already leaking down the fluid and spilling in and flooding it, so uh, there's probably not a whole heck of a lot of pressure on there anyhow, but it, if you just break, when we get to that point, we just break these these screws loose a little bit, what fuel is in there is going to come out. We'll just have a towel ready to go, okay? So what we've got here is we've got, hopefully you guys can see this. Let me see if I can turn on a little bit more light. Um, you can see here that we've just got vacuum lines here, okay? This little guy is the feed that comes over from the pressure side over there. We're going to take that loose, kind of get it out of the way here. Okay, and then we also have this other line right here. Now this line is just being fed off the plenum and it goes to the top of the, uh, of the fuel pressure regulator. Now that we've got all these bolts loose and we've already taken these two bolts loose on this side, we need to take the bolts off over here. I'll loosen this up again guys this this was extremely loose I, I'm really glad I found this um, so it had to been had been sucking air that's for sure 
Yeah, that's just way too loose. And again, they're the same length. Okay, so now what we've got, I'm gonna use a little, see if I can pull this off. This is just gonna come loose there like that. Okay, and then this should actually just lift up. You can see right there, it's just moving around now. Okay, so we're gonna just try to wiggle this loose here like that. We've got a, we've got a line right here that we've gotta take loose. And there, everything's just really loose in here. So it's like on the top side of it, it is what I'm using is a 19 millimeter wrench here. And you can see it's very sloppy, but it doesn't seem to be anything as far as SAE or, or metric. It's kind of weird, I'm not exactly sure. Then I'm use, utilizing a 5 8 wrench here on this. We're just gonna crack this line loose like that. Now this is a rigid line, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you're putting this all together, you get this started before uh, you tighten up everything else. You're probably not gonna be able to get it to start right off. Okay, so once we got that loose, hopefully we can get this, yeah, it'll spin free. That's free. All right, then at that point, this should want to lift up now, finally. Okay, and we should be able to get it where it'll come up. Now, the other thing is, though, we've got an electrical connector that's down below also. Let's see what's holding it up here. So we've got this little electrical guy right there, so you don't want to pull too hard. You want to make sure that you pop that free. Now, these are probably, I mean, this, is, this car's 32 years old, and this plastic is actually not too crazy, it's not super brittle, but um, it very well could be. Now, I'm gonna look inside here, I can smell gas pretty good here, and now you can see that that's where our little monster is. So you can see there, there's no way that you can get it from the outside edge, because you, you also have to take these torques out. Now these are tamper-proof torques, I don't know if hopefully I can get down in there enough to be able to show you, Hopefully my camera is picking that up, but you have to have the tamper-proof ones that has the hole in the center of the torques. Otherwise, you're not going to get those out, okay? So, um, and then your gasket kit, you're going to need, need your gasket kit to put this all back together. Now, again, these look pretty darn good for being 32 years old, but uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change all those, okay? So uh, the next step is that we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this the bolts loose here. And uh, now we're gonna have a little bit of fuel here. But uh, like I said, it, it, this beats that little bit of fuel that's gonna leak out of here. Sure, to me, beats having to tear my dash apart to pull the fuse or take the back end of the car apart. So I'm just gonna have a towel ready to go. What I've done is I've gone ahead and I've got the plenum out of the way. See if we can get maybe a little more light up in here like so. Hopefully that you guys can see that a little bit better. Get the, get my towel out of the way. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this cover, this tube off just to get it out of the way so we don't damage it. Okay. And you can see right there, um, if this, if you were to pull this off like right after shutting off the car, you would end up with some fuel in there, then you would know darn well that this is damaged. Okay, so we're just gonna try to get this, these little guys out of the way there so we're not hurting anything. And then we're gonna take our, our 15 torques and we're gonna start breaking these free. Now remember, the way I'm doing it, there is gas pressure in here, or should be anyway. So I'm just cracking them all the way around.
this little guy might be worse than I thought. It might have already totally leaked down all of its all of its fuel. I brought the car into the garage today and let it sit for I don't know three or four hours here before I started this video. Um, so the engine would be cool, and I am really not seeing any fuel here at all. But I am trying to be as careful as possible. See if I can get it to... Get it to leak out whatever's there. Now there is a spring on this. So... You may end up with a little bit of fuel. We'll see here in a minute. Hope it not. If I pull one of these little guys out of here and see what happens. I'm going to grab my little magnetic holder here. So we don't lose anything. Let's see. There's one. I still got no, no fuel leakage at all going on in here, which is kind of strange. I would have expected to see some fuel already. When I broke the lines loose on my 92, and on that one the fuse was able, I was able to get to the fuse on that one pretty easy. Um, I still had fuel after I released the pressure. This one I'm not seeing anything, which is really strange. This diaphragm may be totally, totally toast on this one. Oh yeah, you can see where it's like totally buckled. And we've got almost no fuel there at all. It looks like it's tore. I'm gonna take my my wonderful little towel that didn't get any didn't get anything on it. I'm gonna use it to. Well, I take that back. The right it must have ran down because the the towel is wet. Okay. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. So we're gonna wipe that out. Now most of the time this car is pretty easy to work on, I think. I mean it's it's not it's not too much of rocket science. So you just want to get get these screws in place. You want to make darn sure you don't cross thread one of these. Okay, so we've got it kind of, you can see right here, let me make sure I get a really good look on that. You can see that angle that this nipple is pointing to. Let me point that out here. So this is going to be able to go on like that. It's going to go straight into the side of the plenum. See that? So, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get our other screws started. Now that we've got two of them in there, every one of the other ones should be easy, pretty easy to go ahead and and put in. Now you notice I'm not tightening these down in any way even, not even like all the way down yet. I want to get them all started. I want to make sure that that rubber is exactly where it wants to be, where that diaphragm wants to be. Everything's lined up just perfect. Okay, so now the next trick is once you do this, you want to tighten this up kind of in a star pattern, just like you do lug nuts on a on a uh, a wheel. You're gonna to want to start at one side here, and then alternate. Come across here like so, like that. Then you're gonna come across this one. 
Now the instructions are in the in the box, so if you get if you don't want to come back and rewatch my video again, you can just read the instructions. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going back and forth. And by doing this, you end up not warping this retaining ring or the or the cap itself. And now everything should be pretty tight just by hand, and then I'll go back and I'll snug everything up with a wrench or with a ratchet, I should say. All right. So now take my little ratchet. And we can put them on here. Now again, I'm just snugging them up. I am not tightening these down really hard. I mean, they're they're tight. Okay, don't get me wrong, but they're they're not. I'm not reefing this down. You don't want. You don't need to. Okay. And then what I do is I usually just follow around. Once I've got them all done staggered like that, in the star pattern like I was talking about, then I just kind of go around. And I do this on my lug nuts too. Just making sure that everything is nice and snug. Okay, so now that part's done. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our, our box of, uh, of gaskets here. And you can see here, we've got a left and a right here, okay? And then we also have the front, front intake, which should be this little guy right here. Okay, and that is all we're gonna need. So we just have these three that we gotta replace. And then we can start putting everything back together. Now that we've got our fuel fuel pressure regulator put back in place, everything's all tightened up there, we're going to need to be able to change the gaskets out. Now, let's see, where did I put my other gasket here? So this little gasket, they're marked left and right. So you can see, hopefully, if I can find it there, this one is the left side. And then there's one over here that says right side. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to set this off to the side for a second. I'm going to go ahead and remove this gasket. And you can see they've got these little, these little clips in here that hold them in place. Okay, so you can see that's nice and clean. We haven't had any leaking going on, so that's nice. So I can go ahead and I can put this one on. If you did, if you had some leaking going on, then you'd probably need to clean the soot off. But I'm just going to push that right in there like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one over here. There we go. Get that one up and out of the way. Okay. And then we can go ahead and we can put this one on. Just like that. So then the next thing we need to do is we're going to have this gasket that we're going to need to change. So once we've got once we've got these done here, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this gasket here. And we're gonna put this one back on. And we can utilize the bolts to hold it in place. Now this would be a little bit easier if I wasn't trying to film it. But there we go. There's that and that holds it in place. Okay. We can take our other bolt here. We can put that one in here like so too like that and this will kind of hold it in place see right there and we can get it all the way through just like that all right so now the last thing we need to do as we go to put the plenum back on is we got to make sure we don't forget about this cable right here this little electrical socket will be almost impossible to plug into the bottom of the plenum if you forget it. So we want to plug that in. And then remember, we want to also tighten up this nut, at least get it started so everything will start to line up, okay? 
So I'm just gonna wipe the wipe the stuff off the top of my plenum here. Wipe the inside edges off. You can see there's some soot there. All right, so now we can go ahead and we're going to set this little guy here. Remember, we're gonna plug our little cable in because we don't wanna forget that little guy. Like I said, that would not be fun. There we go. I'm gonna scoot this forward a little bit, get that to go down. And what we can do is we can also use a bolt going through the gaskets up here like that. We can also do the same thing on this side. That will hold it in place. Like that. Then we can kind of halfway manip manipulate it. Again, you don't want to you want to force anything. You just want to make sure that everything just slowly lines up. Again, you're you're adjusting a lot of different angles here, so you just want to get your bolt started. Once you get these these little guys going. It'll start to make your life a heck of a lot easier. We've got, all we're doing now is we're just, we've set the plenum in place. We've got our gaskets in here, got our, our screws started. And then we've, I just started this one right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start these screws here. Now you may have to adjust this back and forth a little bit by using the mallet here or here. And you're just going to make sure that you don't cross thread these bolts, but you want to get them started. We're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten these up. Okay. Now we're going to put this little guy on there. on to the other side. So we've got the other side done. I'm just gonna go ahead and start these screws here. I just set them in the holes. Okay, like that. All right, come back to the center. Slide that one up. And we'll snug this one up here. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we go ahead and we get our, our little uh, vacuum line on here. Just like so. Get that one on there like that. Get that one on there like that. That part is all taken care of, okay? Then at that point, we want to make sure that we put our, our little plug back on here. Our, oh, our hose, I should say. Okay. Now we get our plugs plugged in here like so. Okay. Then we also need to go ahead and we need to tighten up our front end here. Okay. okay. Look at that. 
And we'll come over here, we'll tighten up the top. So now the next thing that we need to do, and take our little our little guide here, and we can slide that back over that pin, just like that. And then we've just got to put our three bolts that holds our our throttle linkage back in place. There we go. Okay, so now we've got all of our plenum bolts tight. We've got all of our all of our throttle linkage all put back together. And we've just got to tighten back this this uh, line back here. Okay. So again, we're going to do it with a the wrench and another wrench, this is a backup wrench so we're not twisting anything. I know guys, it's probably pretty hard to be able to see that. Um, again, I will let me see if I can get a little better, a little light on the subject here. So we're tightening, we're tightening this line up is what we're doing. There's not a lot of room in here, so this is going to be a slow slow go right here. Just take your time with it. You'll get it. Just not a lot of room. And it's just about snug now. Okay. Alright, so that's done. Now, remember we took this uh, the spark plug wire and we, we turned it, so we're going to turn that little guy back down and make sure that it's pressed and locked in place, okay? And I'm just checking all of them to make sure that I haven't disrupted them. You heard a few of them click, so. All right, so we've got all our bolts done on this side. Everything's plugged in. Our plug-in down below is plugged in, as well as our vacuum lines on the other side. So everything is done on this side. So now at this point, We'll go around to the other side again, and we'll look to see what else we need to do over there. So now we've got our bolts all done here. We've got our vacuum all tied up. That's all done. We've got all of our plugins here. The only thing that we don't have done yet, as far as the, the plugins, is our mass airflow sensor. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our cover here on top of the spark, the, uh, the distributor, which I have that little guy right here. Okay, that guy goes there just like that. Okay, snug them up. You don't have to refund these either. Okay. All right, now the last thing we've got to do is go ahead and put the, put the mass airflow sensor on. I set that off to the side right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to reinstall it. And it's much easier to plug it in while you still have it loose. So let's go ahead and just plug it in. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick it into our snorkel like that. Get this in here. Again, you want to be careful with this little guy because it's an expensive part. Last time I had to buy one, it was about $350 for one. They might have gotten cheaper over time now, I don't know, but or more expensive, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, you do want to be very careful with this. Also, guys, one how I learned the hard way is I someone told me, "Oh, you can just jet straight, you know, just uh, spray off your engine and get it all clean." Now, this is goes back a little ways now. I was 27 years old when that happened. I'm 53, so you can do the math. Um, I just went in here and started spraying everything down. Boy, my engine looked awesome. But I can tell you one thing, the very next day, my engine wouldn't run worth the crap. And it, what ended up happening is I ended up getting water in my mass airflow sensor and it shorted it out. So, like I said, about $350 later, I had to buy a new one. Ever since then, I do not jet spray off my the, using water on my engine ever um, I hand wipe everything down, um, and I actually use Pledge. And the reason behind that, I had an old uh, old timer 
tell me one time they did did his uh, cars that he did at the car shows. He said he used Pledge on everything and then wiped it off with a brush and towels and things like that. And I asked him why, and he's like, because Pledge will leave a nice natural shine, but it repels dust. So all this dust that you're wiping off isn't going to get stuck to it again. So anyway, guys, we've got this all plugged in. This is plugged in. Everything's good to go. So then at this point, all we need to do is test it. So, so we've got everything all put together. I'm going to go ahead and try to start it. I'm going to open up the garage door so I don't gas myself out. We've got everything all put back together, so hopefully it works. Okay, so I'm going to turn the key on at first and let the, let the fuel pump pressurize everything. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to walk over here and look really fast. Make sure I don't have any leakage. And I don't see anything leaking. Alright. And it lit right on the first, first shot. Let's shut it off. Now usually I would have to be putting my foot to the floor to get this to start. I wouldn't be able to start it from outside. We're going to try that again. Yeah, that just wouldn't happen normally. I think we got it. We are just about up with our 20 minutes timer. I had set Alexa to be able to tell me when 20 minutes had passed. It should be coming up any second. Alexa, go ahead and pause. Okay, so we've waited our 20 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give it a, give it a shot and see if it lights right up. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative and that it really helps you in diagnosing this. A lot of times when you look on the forum, you look in a lot of different places, everybody is telling you go to the fuel filter, go to the fuel pump, all the easy things, but no one wants you to go and look at that, that fuel regulator because it is a pain in the butt to change. But this is the second C4. Uh, in the last two years that I've had the exact same symptom and the exact same fix. In my 92, my red one, I was, I'm sure you've seen on some of my other videos, I had replaced everything else because it was easier and it was a lot more expensive. So this time I trusted my instinct and said, yeah, it's got to be that. So I'm still working all of, off of everything else. I had changed so many other parts on that other car and Finally, that's what I ended up having to do to fix it. But this time around, I just, just trusted my judgment and that's, that's what it turned out to be. So guys, again, thank you for watching. If you guys haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button so you'll be alerted of our next uploads. And guys, those of you that already have subscribed and been watching, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We're climbing every day. We're getting more and more sponsors every day. And I just have, have to thank you guys that the channel is growing the way it is. I never in a million years thought that it would ever grow the way it is. So anyway, guys, again, thank you for watching. Be safe, and I'll talk to you later. We hope you enjoyed watching the Corvette channel. Thank you, and don't forget to hit subscribe.